Jay Shramataji, Maureen. Jay Shramataji, hi. Thank you for joining us for this uh, interview uh, about your memorable times with Shri Adi Shakti Shramataji Nirmala Devi herself, uh, especially as we um, get closer to the uh, times of Navaratri, the, the goddess in her form as we worship Sri Durga, and uh, especially your memory with Shrimatji in the Himalayas. Uh, so, because one of the nights and one of the forms of Shrimatji that we worship is Sri Shalaputri, uh, which is the daughter of the mountains. And um, Shankarji and I had the privilege and the blessing to be at her school in the Himalayas in uh, Dharamshala that she set up for these children. And uh, it was just such a special place to be in the collective to meditate whenever we could um it it it's a very special place but we would like to know from both of you what it was like in those times when it was please so if you could uh, start maureen okay so we went there in um december 1970 we were, we were there no, we over to, the year. So it's 76 into 77, wasn't it, Pat? Yeah, but we, we went in January. In January, yes. Oh, just after Christmas, yes. So it, the beginning yeah. of January, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And then uh, I, I don't know how long it was before we went to um, Nepal. It, it was certainly it was several a little weeks. while, because we, we came into Mumbai first, and then we went to Delhi and from, uh, well, then we went into the villages and then we went to Delhi and from there we went to um, Nepal, wasn't it, Pat? Yeah, yeah. So we'd done a lot of the tour. We were there three months. So it's, and we were back in Mumbai for mother's birthday. So it was between, it was sort of February, early March, possibly. Probably early March, yeah. Yeah. We went to, um, we got a train, didn't we, to. We did. Um, and then a, and then a coach. A bus, didn't we? No, that was coming chicken. back. No, that was good. Oh, that was coming back. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we got a train there we, going. We got, a, we got a train to Patna. And yeah. So this, sorry, this wasn't your first trip to India, was it? Yes, it was. Yes, yes. It was. Okay. Yeah. So could you could you tell us right from when you boarded the pl plane at Heathrow what it was uh, like um, individually? as well as sort of, I mean, it, it's taking back so many years, vibrationally, if, if you could uh, share with us, please. Well, it was all unknown. I, I, I got a terrible cold on the plane from, from nowhere, and I spent the whole journey sneezing oh. uh, and trying to f find bits of um, tissue paper to sneeze into. So it wasn't exactly very... Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or inspiring it was all new wasn't it i mean we had no well, idea what to expect i think we i'd certainly never flown before no and I, I don't think you had either so it was 11 hours i believe the journey mm -hmm. so we had uh, and we were just so excited i know pat had his cold but you know it was it was incredible because at one point mother had said we were going to go to india so we we saved up and then when she came back she said we weren't in any state to go so it all got cancelled and then it all got back put back on again so we had to uh, get ourselves sorted out mother had actually for the girls asked us to wear make special clothes we had to we had long skirts mm -hmm. and um so that we were respectable you know because certainly i was coming from the happy hippie background um I remember making this skirt and it was so hot when I got there. <laughs> it was like we were dressed up to the nines. And when we arrived, it, it was it was about three in the morning, I think. Was it very early in the morning, I think. Um, and I can just remember my my hands hurting because I could feel all my catches so badly. <laughs> well, I remember they, they, they greeted us with garlands. They did, yes, and we were so we, embarrassed. We all got in the car, and as the car set up, set off, uh, the uh, Indian yogis surreptitiously wound down the windows and stuck their hands out. So yeah. I think 
I think they could feel our catches too. Well, I know that the the um, when they put our luggage in the boot, I got hit on the head, and they they just asked which bit of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said Yogi something style. like very, very good clearing out or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And then the first, the first place we went to was uh, where we went to where Mother was. And then I think the next day we set off for Rahuri and all that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we went down to the beach that night. Um, that same yeah. night. Yeah, um, it, 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 so we were all, well, it must have been, I think we, we were very jet lagged, but that day we went to the beach. At Mumbai, and um, uh, I think we were bought Kulfi ice cream, and um, we were sort of told that that you don't actually go s into the sea; you just respect the sea. And it, you know, we were just learning so much; we had no idea what we were doing. I think that would sum us up, wouldn't you, Pat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't have a clue. We were we were absolutely clueless, and the poor Sarjogis, as he said, I think they. Uh, were a bit astonished that this two bundle or no, there was there was six of us on that flight, wasn't there? Because Marie no. came later. And Gregor was already there. No, Marie wasn't there. She didn't turn no, up. No, she came right later. Much it, much later. Uh, we, we all were on it except for Tony, who went over. Tony, there. yeah. But I thought we uh, Gregor wasn't there. He was in Nepal. Yeah, but he met us. Yes, he met us in in Mumbai actually. In Mumbai, right? He, uh, he come over there for a few days and then yeah. took off again. Yeah. Then uh, we did all kinds of things in in India and uh, include. Well, I mean, after after uh, uh, Rahuri and places like that, we also went to Shirdi with with. Uh, yes, Shumatiji. we did. And, yeah. Uh, when we got there, Mother was um, horrified at the vibrations. Yeah, she was hitting she, head. she went to the back of the of the temple and she was banging her head against the wall. Yeah. She said it just wouldn't clear. And um one of the yogis put his hand between the the wall and her head so his mother wouldn't hurt herself. And uh remember I got stuck in the ladies' section <laughs> uh, in the temple, and next thing I knew there was all these ladies twirling around doing some kind of dance. I was stuck yeah. in the middle. It's a bit embarrassing. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, th then we went to. She, Mother set us set us off overland uh, to yeah. um, Alora Nagenta. And, yeah. And we also went to um, uh, uh, the Taj Mahal, didn't we, on the way? Yeah. Yeah. And I got really, I got really ill at um, Alora Nagenta. Yeah. And then we eventually got. Make... To, we, yeah, you did. You you missed it. Yeah, I got as far as the beginning and couldn't go any further, and had to go back. No, we had to stay in the hotel room while we went and looked at everything. Yeah, but wow. uh, then we got to Delhi, and 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 there were programs, and and we spent quite a lot of time shopping for some reason, and um, yeah. and at some stage we uh, we set off for Nepal. We got a train. I remember. Lying on the, uh, you know, uh, the beds, you know, that pull down on the but, train. Yeah, the pull down wooden. I, yeah. And I could feel the, the catches of on on my toes of people when they walked past. Um, that was uh, that was quite interesting. And then we got up early in the morning. We got giant clay pots full of tea from somebody yeah. who was selling them. Then we went to Patna and went into the Ganges. And oh, uh, yes. no, no, first we went to we went to Banaras, didn't we? How did we? We went to Banaras. Uh, I think we were in a car going to Banaras, and uh, then, then we, we we got in a boat and we we went right into the river and submerged ourselves yeah, much to the right. shop of the guy with the boat. Yeah, there's one one of those pictures has got has got that. Yeah, some of that. Yeah. And then we we got a plane from Patna to uh, Kathmandu, and then. Um, I think Mother came later, a day or so later, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, we we met Gregoire and we all went and hung out at his place, and and uh, and that's that's where Mother caught knits from me, and she was combing them out of her hair and taking the name of boots to to um, destroy that them. Might be, she... That might be one of the photos that we, I've got of Mother combing her yeah, hair. Yeah, absolutely. It's her combing the knits out of her hair. Oh, dear. 
I'm going to share some uh, photos at this point. I think Reshna has very kindly sent some photos on email. Um, and so I'll share it uh, here. And maybe that will also uh, enable some more memories there. So let's see here, for example. So where are we here? Well, somewhere in Nepal. As you imagine she's in that picture, you can just see her back um, on the left between the... Um, Yes, you can Next see this. Yeah, yeah, this is Shimanji, yeah. isn't it, with her sari? Well, I, I don't know what yeah, we were looking at, though, I'm yeah. afraid. That must be somewhere in so, Kathmandu. Uh -huh. The hat is very typically Nepalese uh, of this child that she's wearing. So, yes, this, this yeah. must be. Mm. Oh. Okay, and is this down somewhere where, where you lived in uh, Gregoire's house or uh, when you were there? Yeah, well, we, there's one or two pictures uh, in the garden anyway. So uh, let me just try and identify. This is you, Maureen. Is that you in the white, blue, white sari? Ne next to Shumatiji, yes. Yes, next to Shumatiji. And then, and then Douglas. Douglas. Yes. That's Douglas. And that's Pat in the white kurta pajama, probably. Might, might be. It yeah. might be me. And, and then that's Gavin and Jane. Gavin and Jane. Although that could be I Tony. The... It could be Tony. And Gregoire, yeah. Gregoire is on mother's left, obviously. Yeah, Gregoire is standing here. And there's someone also there. That could be you, Pat, as well. Yeah, it, yeah, could, yeah. Be, yeah. it could be my arm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, okay. Um, well, who was yeah. taking a photo? Yeah, that's the point. That was uh, when we were leaving Kathmandu. I took that out of the bus window. Oh, okay, that's that popera. Popera, that was popera. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were we, in these hollowed out um, canoe things. Just uh, a log that was hollowed out. Yes, very very dodgy. Yeah. Yeah, we hung around in the lake. Oh, that was out oh. the plane window at the Himalayas. That was yeah. the little the little plane. Yeah. Uh, local plane sightseeing. It. Yeah, we, we went and flew backwards and forwards in front of the Himalayas. Wow. What what was it like uh, vibrationally for you guys? Amazing. I mean, the, Amazing. the Himalayas yeah. were so magical, yeah. yeah. I, they I, are I, I, the yeah. whole time I, I kept feeling that they were like the moon somehow, giving reflecting moonlight. That was my feeling. It was strange. Although on this particular trip, I spent most of the time sulking because they... <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> because our side of the plane flew on the other opposite side to the Himalayas, and on the way back, um, it flew much further away. So, so he wasn't as close, yeah. But yes. but we got a long strip photograph, and Shumashji signed them, didn't she? We we got a a, a certificate, which I've still got somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And Maureen actually went up to the pilots in the in the cockpit and asked them if I could come and look go there to, to see properly because I was so upset and I was so angry that I refused. <laughs> so what was this certificate about? Oh, it just that they, we... they gave it to all the sightseers who went on the plane trip. But to uh, see the, see the the mother signed my one to, to certify that I'd been to the Himalayas. Because he was still they? upset. They? Because I haven't heard anything like this before. Like, yeah, Who? I got it. I've got Let's it somewhere. It. Who... I don't know where she is. Anyway, um, I don't know whether we can find it or not, but it's here somewhere. It's okay. this is this is definitely Nepal. Where is this? Do you know? Yes, we're all shopping. That's Tony and Jane on the left. Question is, my, ah, okay. my air certificate anywhere? Do you know? That's me and and Gavin in front of me. And you can see mother there. Yes. yes, and mother's hair all loose. You can. Yeah, yes. what, what mother used to do was she used to go into the shops first and ask what all the yes. prices were, and then come out and wave at us to come and 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 tell us so that she said we well, we'd be cheated because they yes. thought we were foreigners. Yes. But we were still we were still cheated because we were hopeless at bargaining. 
they'd tell us a price and we go, oh, that's nice. Oh, well, don't do it. that. You have to say no, no, no. Well, I found a certificate. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. If you can see it there. Amazing. Amazing. We will we will we will and have a look at it as well she again. Wrote, she said she wrote Mr. Patrick. Mr. Patrick. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, Pat. We are going to get back to that in a minute after these photos so that you know you are on the screen better. Um and the and the certificates hopefully much more in full Maybe, view yeah. than it has been. Yeah. Okay. And where is this now? We've got a this is also book. Kathmandu. This is uh, Kathmandu, yeah. Gavin tried not to look scared as this uh bull was uh, eyeing him in the street. We walked yeah. very, very slowly out of the way. Mm -hmm. Nice. This was up in the hills when we went on a picnic. Well, we went, didn't we go to see some holy guy? Yeah, we did, but I can't find the photos. Yeah, was, but that's what that's where why we were out, and that's when Trimashti's yeah. purse went missing, and we oh. we she was least bothered, but uh, Gregoire was absolutely trying to sort of get it all sorted out, and we just watched all these people going up and down the mountain. You could just follow they them. All, all the locals they set off to try and find this purse, and they went to. They went into, you could see them go into a house yeah. and then come out the other end and a few people had joined the posse. So at each house <laughs> came out, the line got longer until they eventually arrived somewhere and found the purse and gave it, uh, brought it back. Yeah. And then mother, yep. um, mother gave um, each of the, uh, uh, she lined up all the kids. I think she gave some money to the people that bought it back. But then yeah. she lined up all the kids. There were a lot of little kids there. And then she she gave um, each kid gave them she gave them realization and she gave them one one uh, rupee. And uh, someone amongst us who shall be nameless said, "She matter do you cannot pay people to give them their uh, realization." And mother said, "I'm the Adi Shakti. I can do anything I like." <laughs> <laughs> amazing! Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? Oh. The Adi Shakti herself. Yeah. Okay. Where are we here now? I think we're, we're back in Kathmandu. Yes. Incidentally, that one on the that guy on the picture before yeah. was yes. um was Gregoire's long su uh, suffering servant <laughs> Tej. So yes. Yeah. Remember Tej and uh, yeah yeah he he had quite a sense of humour. Um, did he? Yes, he did. When when yeah. we arrived at the place where this hermit was, it's a long story, yeah. but he uh, he looked Go like on. a traditional hermit, you know, with his hair sort of done up in the top knot and everything. And then when we, we announced Adi Shakti to him, he started singing songs. And um, mother, next thing we knew, uh, mother was behind him with her feet on his back, and. Um, Tej and it, talking to him, and he was talking back to mother. And Tej looked at us and looked at this guy, and then he. I think um, it froze for a minute there. Huh? He's still working now. It's all right now. So you Sorry, got as far as saying Tej looked a, at mother and looked at the guy, and and went like this because he was. <laughs> mother said he was crazy because uh, because he'd been driven mad by the Kali Yuga. Yeah. Krishna. Hang on, there's someone at the door. I don't believe this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, as it happens. Um, yeah. I mean that that. The, the the architecture of the building that is in that photograph, Maureen, yeah. seems like one of, either one of the temples or one of the palace. Um, and certainly, certainly, we went to. It was in, the, I believe, the centre of Kathmandu, and I I believe that round the corner was the big Mahakali statue that's about I don't know twenty feet high or something, 
And we okay. used to have a picture of us in front of it, whether they've got one coming up or not, I don't know. Oh. Well, I missed that. But she was asking if it was a temple or one of the palaces, and I believed it was a temple. The, the, the big statue oh, of Mahakali so. was round the corner. Do you remember, Pat, the big statue? Yeah, I do, yeah. Mm. It may have been. I, I got a feeling, yeah, somebody said that the that was where the, the ladies could look out through the lattice work. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was cut, they're sort of screened off. Uh -huh. sure. Yes. Maureen? Sorry, I was just saying, Shumash, do you want us to see everything? So she would take us, you know, I mean, come with us, if you like, around everywhere and didn't, explain didn't she take things. You in, didn't she take you somewhere, a temple where only women could go? Yes, I think so. I think so. And it might have been that one. Who knows? Um, okay. Where is this then? It's a lovely sketch and a lovely blouse. I don't know. The I mean, it's probably in fashion now again, isn't it? I don't well, know. That, that, don't actually, that was actually a skirt Shumashti gave me and the um, waistcoat Shumashti gave me. And I've still got it's It's a red velvet. She gave me a lot of her clothes and that wow. waistcoat was hers. The skirt was a batik sort of um, thing that she gave me that wasn't hers, but was something that she'd picked up on her travels. So, yes, um, she, she just she has given me a lot of lot of things. Yes, very, very oh, lucky. Nice. Very lucky indeed, no doubt. It's a lovely doorway there. I mean, it's just kind of, it's yeah. reminding me of the temples of I remember the somebody... Minati temple or something like that in the south of India. Sorry? The 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 architecture and the and the colors on them uh, of the doorway on this particular temple, I suppose, or the building there is. It kind of reminded me of the temples in South India. Oh, South India, yeah. But this was all Nepal. This is all Kathmandu. This is Nepal, Nepal, Kathmandu. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. And that's and up in the hills again. That must be before we we found we came across the. Yeah, I think this is where we had the picnic. Mm. Any interesting things? I mean, having a picnic with Srimataji there. I mean, what did you guys have for a start? Because there oh aren't sandwiches God. so easily made in Nepal. No, no. Uh, uh, Greg was long-suffering servant. Tej would have made them. Yes, um, it would have been something like chapatis and things, I believe. Yes, parathas, um, yeah. I would imagine, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you know, Srimataji used to cook for us so much as well. You know, yeah. It, it was yeah. Tell us about yeah. It. She she um. Tell us about I mean, it. Gosh, well, um, I mean, I can't remember if she cooked in Nepal. Probably not because Tej was there, but um, certainly in England she did, and uh, we would sort of. I mean, as one of the girls, I would sort of stand around, supposedly helping, but not having a clue what to do. And mother would, she used to make the most amazing um, dal, put in so much butter. I mean, butter and butter and butter so that it was like three inches floating on the top sort of thing. Wow. Absolutely beautiful, you know. And uh, it, it was like mother would do things just to take, to me, to take, take our minds off ourselves so that we'd become absorbed in what she was doing, whether it was watching a TV program or her cooking, so that we, she could, and quite often in the middle, she'd just go, ha, and she'd cleared us out of something that we'd let go of because our attention was no longer inwards on our problems. It, it did sort of, she'd released it, if that so what, makes sense. Just please elaborate for me what you meant with you let go off and then... Well, it's, it's I mean... Do you remember, Pat, when we were watching the, um, was it Bette Davis film or one of the films um, one evening and we somehow got thrilled with the film without really meaning to, you know, because we were sat with mother. We, we, we mm. sat and, and then she said, because our attention was no longer stuck on our problems, she was able to clear whatever it was that we were stuck on previously. 
So that's how what I mean by letting go, in that mm. you you were sort of like too 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 identified with what was your problem, so that when she manages to get your attention to to sort of come away from your problem, she could then clear it out because she said it was so so mixed up in the the negative things were so entwined with us that she couldn't pull it out or it would hurt us we well, had to tried, allow she tried to do that you remember with me and i can't remember where it was it might have been bawdy she, she was oh. trying to, to get this uh uh boot she said it was between my heart and my patchouli and uh she's trying to get it out and i started to faint everything yeah. started, so it went all yellow and then white and then i had to sort of fall down uh, a bit and, and and sort of crouch down and and mother said uh, i couldn't bear it you couldn't get it out it would have to come later yeah yeah well that was it that was it we were you said it was i mean it, to me it was like um spaghetti junction sort of a of our own delicate self and and the things that were in between that couldn't be just removed wow. easily. But we had lots of things like I mean, do you remember that time in in uh, Mumbai when we went to dinner with somebody posh with mother? And, yes, um, I do. Uh, we got Coca Cola. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we uh, we were mother was talking about something and and at some. It was going on and on, and people, we were asking her questions. And at some point, I suddenly realized she was going round and round this point where she was saying, you just have to stop thinking. And then I just stopped thinking, and then I was just watching. And then yeah. someone else did as well, and then someone else. And it just ended up with one last one of us saying, uh, asking questions, and we were all just staring, wondering yeah. why yeah. it wouldn't just yeah. go silent until it, in the end that person did. Yeah. yeah, it was it was amazing. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that she, is, was, yeah. she was uh, endlessly patient with us, endlessly. Oh yeah, well it was in it was in uh, Nepal actually that mother said we were we had to be foundation stones. Yeah, so, uh, she said, uh, you know, you, you may not be seen because you'll be sort of un under the in the ground under the temple, but um, and and she said there would be some. Pretty flowers coming along later on, but the, the, the foundations are important. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No building without a foundation. But gosh, mm. um, yeah. what else could you share with us about this very, very, um, you know, special trip? Because now, when you look at it, I mean, it's Navratri time soon. We are in the heart of the universe. And and you went from England, the heart of the universe, to uh to India and to to Sahasra of the universe, yeah. which is the Himalayas, which uh Shumatji has said gives vibrations to the entire universe. So um yeah, tell us about how well, how it, was it just went. Like a, it was just like a almost dreamlike, isn't it? Wasn't it? After after the yeah. first two or three weeks. You just it just seemed like you were in this amazing dream that would just just seem to go on forever. Uh, it was fabulous the whole time, but but somehow we, I don't know, we sort of took it for granted in a way. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we'd, we'd been elevated, I think, to a place mm. where you it became normal to be with the Adi Shakti all the time. Um, and you'd, you'd be pulled out from the crowd because mother would say, where are the foreigners? And we'd be <laughs> hauled in front of her from the back where we were trying to hide. Um, well, we weren't just hiding. We were, we thought it was, we wanted to give the locals a chance to. Well, exactly. To That's what I meant. You know, we, we were kind mm -hmm. of, we didn't want to be, um, you know, we knew what state we were in. We were beginning to know, let's say, uh, what state we were in. Um, and you know the the last thing we wanted was all these incredible hardworking sarjogis that were sort of zipping here, there, and everywhere and looking after us. We didn't want to take center stage, but Mother was so concerned for us and looked after us constantly as to where we were going. And we very often went in the car with her, whereas you know everybody else had to make their own way places. 
And in fact, mm -hmm. Nepal was a, a half, sort of halfway through up the, the India tour for us, and and it it was like that was for that week we went back to being yeah. just with mother. Yes. Yeah. There were one or two people. Do you remember there was that Buddhist lady who turned up from somewhere that mother gave realization to, um, in Gregoire's in house. Nepal. Yes, I don't know where Vaguely. she. Came. I don't know whether it was one of his colleagues or something. Yeah, it could have probably was. I mean, we we did do Ajwan there with Mother. Do you remember? Oh, that was she, the first time. Yes, yeah, and she yeah. put her head under the so under the shawl. She she got a shawl, her own shawl, and we all had to go underneath her shawl with Mother to inhale the Ajwan. Mm. <laughs> so it was the divine under under Shrimatiji's shawl. My God. Yes. Out yes, of the world. Even imagine that. I, I had then, a photo of that somewhere. We did, we did, and and I, and it was after that that she said you must cover your head after doing Ajwan yeah, and go yeah. to bed, and you should never do it and go out. So oh. there's been times when we've seen people do it at you know things like Flood Street, and I think, how do I stand up and say you shouldn't go home like this? <laughs> you know. Well, it's. Uh, oh. All these years, I did not know that. And I think you might have mentioned it in the first series of interviews that we did. It's it's amazing how the the brain tends to forget certain yeah. very critical details, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, incidentally, Shushmita Goshna says she sent them you some more photos. I don't know what they are. Okay. That's fine. This this picnic photo actually reminds me of, uh, you know, where we were in the school and the mountainside we used to go for walks or picnics. Oh. We had similar times. Yes. Um, but of course, Shimatji in a very subtle form. Um, I'm trying to... I'll just stop sharing the screen for a moment. So for the time being, if you could... Tell us about those evenings. You spent a week in Nepal there with Shimataji. So one of the evenings was a joint treatment, which was amazing. And it's good to know that very important as well, that if we've done a joint treatment, we shouldn't go outside and we should yeah. keep our head covered. Is that right? Yes, yeah. and go to bed. <laughs> yes. And go to bed. Okay. So it's <laughs> okay. And and what what about the other other days that were there? um that you were there with her because daytime yes you're sightseeing you're shopping yeah, um yeah it's hard to remember but, really it um, really is it really is um i mean that evening sticks out because obviously we did that but i mean generally with mother it was always being taught things always being you know taught through well, things she used to talk to us and ask sometimes ask us questions and yeah, and mostly we used to ask her questions, and and she just talk about all kinds of things. Uh, it's, I really can't remember. I can remember being told off for um, and how I learned that you you don't. I mean, it's such a, a basic, simple thing that you don't criticize each other in Saj Yoga. But I'd said something about Gregoire and Mother in private, not in front of him, but uh, or anyone else told me that that's not what you do. You don't criticize it. You know, it's thing that went went in me so deep because, you know, all the, the criticizing of each other that, that we hear about now, you know, it, it, she said, it doesn't matter what they do. That's not the point. You have to be yeah. very careful. Wow. Well, that's uh, thanks for sharing that, Maureen, because uh, at this juncture, as things stand, it is, it's, it's, it's very important to be reminded of that, really. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, there um, have been times when mothers told us to speak up about things, but it was a particular way of doing it. I think she was, yeah. she was particularly sort of, you know, that, as I say, at times we've been told you must speak up if you feel a thing, but it's, it's yes. how it's done. And, it, and it's what yeah. your intentions are. I think that's what I took from it. What was your intention? Were you just trying to sort of be a bit clever or were you honestly concerned about something? And I certainly wasn't. Yeah. I was probably a bit clever, I think. You know, a bit, a bit young. 
I think, oh, well, even even older, I mean, uh, yeah, certainly it's, it's a very uh, fundamental question, but uh, not an easy one to answer, isn't it? Whether you yeah. are being honest yeah. or not. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it, you know, it's, it's something that comes back to me all the time, that conversation with mother. So, yeah. yeah. What was it like, um, you know, of course, eating good sort of Indian sort of Nepali cuisine is quite similar to Indian, but not exactly. I mean, they have some really nice uh, aloo potato salad and stuff like that. Really, really nice. Um, but um, how did you find it uh, with Trimataji there and the cooking uh, that 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 was there? I mean. How, how was that? And and I guess because you were in vibrations at an elevation, uh, sort of subtly, that that didn't quite matter, was it the case? Well, I mean, certainly for me, I mean, I, I, when we first came to Sergio over Pat and I, eating was our, our uh, one pastime we could do and know that it wasn't going to harm us, if you like, with all the other things we'd done before. So we were quite fond of food. And I can yeah. remember not so much in Nepal, but it, it happened quite a lot that when we were with mother, I had no appetite, no interest in food. And then afterwards, it would all come back. I think, oh, there was all that lovely food and I wasn't interested. <laughs> so that's how I can remember that the that my interest wasn't taken up with the food when she was there. It, it was, uh, I mean... For myself, I'd fa I'd been I'd been actually quite sick when I first met Mother, basically, and it was after eating Indian food at her house. And not I don't mean that the food made me sick, but I was clearing out. And it when we went to India, it took me a long time to be able to get used to eating purely Indian food um, because of that. So you know, I it, it was a rediscovery, if you like. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really hard because when you're his mother, that that things for me anyway, they sort of dwindled in importance completely. Um, yeah, yeah, in a different dimension altogether, isn't it? Is there yeah. anything that stands out for you? Because there you were with Shimataji as as a young lady, um, and and there was the other ladies, and it's just the three of you uh, representing. Um, well, I, d I don't know. I would imagine you would have spent time together uh, yeah. with Shimataji. Yeah. Well, we, we got, um, we were very blessed in that way, obviously, because, you know, in sleeping quarters, we were, we were always near mother as the ladies. Um, and she, she again paid particular attention, made sure that we were always sort of looked after. Um, and the Sajogis were very, very sweet, the ladies who attended her. But when we were in Nepal, there was, as you say, just um, us there. Um, but somehow she was, we were like little children. So there was no difference between the females and the males in a weird sort of way, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, we we to me we were always like little children with her. Yeah, it became a bit different later on, but somehow yes. it was a bit like yeah. that. But it was. I mean, but we did. There were so many extraordinary things. Like I don't know if you want to talk about it more, but the, when Mother was telling you about Christ oh. uh, in in Oxford. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can. Yes, um, Mother would. Some we we'd been to a meeting in Cambridge. And mother took me back with her to her house. So it was just herself and I. Oh, and that's a dead, sorry. Sorry? Is that, is that her oh, house? Said, yeah, her house, her screen. Uh, her her screen. house yes. wood in her screen, yes. yeah. And we were, she was sitting there and I was sitting on the floor. And she started talking about Christ. And I realized I was with Mary. And I became absolutely overwhelmed. And uh, Mother noticed that it had had this profound effect on me. And it was like she drew the curtain 
again. Yeah. And yeah. brought it back to her and me in a sitting room in Oxted because the realization was just too much, too much. Yeah. And I, I later realized that that's how she had to be with us a lot because we couldn't literally take her in her real form. When I first met her, I saw that she was a goddess. That was my first feeling. And I didn't know where that came from. I'd never thought that before. But then um, later on, she managed to become human for us so that we could interact with her and talk to her. Otherwise, yeah. you you literally couldn't do anything. And that, that was my experience when I sat with her. I, yeah, I mean, often things would happen. Uh, I mean, I remember walking into another place. I think that was in 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 the place we we had in Gower Street, and Mother was cooking, and and I looked in into the room, and she looked like a kind of genie that was magical genie that was floating a few inches off the air, off the ground. Not that she was, but it, it looked like that somehow. It just yeah. looked completely un, unearthly uh, and extraordinary. Another time, wow. I was with her in uh, Oxted uh, in her screen, and she was talking about something, and she started playing with her hands like this, and I, I could see this ball of energy. It was like a ball of energy that she was just playing playing with, extraordinary. And this this other guy that I was there, with um saw the same thing as well and so there, there would often be time and i had other experiences of course but um you would often feel that you know the way it used to feel to me when whenever mother came into a room where well, you went to, to a room where mother was it, i felt as if the, i was in a doll's house and and mother was this giant being yeah looking yeah, into yeah. the doll's house <clears throat> through yeah. a window, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I can remember going to her place um, in Victoria and we were waiting to take the lift and the lift came down and Sri Mataji was there, stood in the lift. And it's the first time I'd ever realised that Mother was shorter than me because she always seemed so immense because mm. I was looking down at her and I never never realised that before because always she seemed, well, just an immense personality, size and mm. was irrele irrelevant somehow. Yeah, every room she was in always seemed two or three times as big as, as yeah. it did normally. Somehow. Well, do you remember when we went back to Ice House Wood and we couldn't believe how small the house looked? It mm. felt like a palace when we were there with Mother. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, going back to Nepal, uh, it's really hard to remember. I know. Um, okay. Greshna sent some photos, some more. Maybe let's, sh I'll share them and see if that <laughs> um, brings back some more memories. What's Katman do again? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the temple. I had a lovely oh. picture of Mother before that standing in front of that uh, big tall one with the eye on it, you know. Okay. Yeah, this Where was us travelling around. That must have been the picnic day again. It must have been, yeah. That was the car by the looks of it. Mm. Must have been Gregoire's car. Valley, you're overlooking a valley here. There's a river flowing. So, mm. Yeah, okay. Very scenic, isn't it? So you can see oh, Sri Ganesh. That was Pokhara again. Yeah. Yeah. Bokra, okay. That's the same photo. This is can't shopping. can't man do all this all these ones well. Again. Yep, that's about it really, but amazing photos there. What about have you got the one of mother coming the coming her hair in the garden in Gregor's garden? No, we haven't got that one. Sorry. Haven't you? What happened to it? Okay. 
Okay, so um, after Nepal, so I mean, did that wasn't probably the time when you were offering any pujas, was that? No. Um, they were all organized by the the um, collectives out there, so we we didn't do any in Nepal that I can remember. Did you have a collective in Nepal at all at that point of time? Because there was a Yogini that opened up a restaurant or something like that. That was later that. on. That was much later much on. Much later on. Yeah. No, there so was nobody was... there. Just no, Gregoire. Just Gregoire. Yeah. Gregoire and Tez. Yeah. And Gregoire's dog, Cider, wasn't it? Cider? <laughs> I don't Cider. remember the name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good memory there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Shmataji had a puja when she went to this Dharamshala school where the school is now. Sri Shailaputri puja in 1985. So this is about 11 years after you went with her to Nepal. It's the same mountain range, but in the Northwest. Hmm. Um, and at that puja, Sh Shmataji mentioned how uh, there were sages or people meditating in the mountains who absorbed all her vibrations, sucked all her vibrations. So at that point of time, actually, she had, she had very sort of, the, the size of her bangles was like a young girl, not, not Srimataji yet, how she was, how we yeah. saw her uh, and knew, know her um, because the vibrations had been absorbed by all these people uh, hidden in the caves or, or you know just me in meditation and stuff so all this time now uh, from then uh, what what has been the sort of vibrational changes for for you both um, in in your capacity to absorb the vibrations and is there any sort of tips that you could give to the yogis now that would help sort of catalyze that more, I would say more, more silent meditation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, it to me, it's it's that um, unfortunately we were so damaged that it's taken took such a long time to get to a place where you even could recognise the damage, let alone um, you know feel. There there are times, obviously, when you get completely elevated, and similar to when I was explaining about mother distracting our attention, it's when you can let go of all the stuff that um, is around. And then, you know, I mean, Pat's had it happen at extraordinary times when he's usually up against it more than anything else. Um, when things have just opened up for you, isn't it? Yeah, well, I the first time I had my sort of some really amazing experiences before that i i'd felt the lowest i've ever felt and yeah and this was quite some years after you know that i'd been in sad yoga and i was just going through such heavy stuff and i just thought i'll never get through it and i just felt that i was literally sliding into hell and i thought oh well i suppose i'll just witness what hell's like you know that happens i just i couldn't fight anymore you know i just said there's nothing i can do about it and next day i went into this incredible blissful blissful state that lasted for weeks so you know it, you just don't know um anything could happen to you the next moment spontaneously yeah. all, all my deepest experiences have been when i least expected them yeah I yeah, never sat down and and thought, oh, I think I'm a nice experience now. It's usually yeah. the opposite. It's yeah. usually the opposite. It happens usually quite at inconvenient times as well. You know, when you, yeah. you think you you <laughs> put a drop everything and 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 enjoy what's going on and abandon all your plans. I can but remember. Actually, sorry, sorry, I just thought of one thing, which I did notice very markedly, and that was. That the times with Shimataji before we started doing public programs were particularly special and amazing. 
Yeah. And when we started getting all these um, new seekers coming in suddenly to to the collective in London, the vibrations got heavier and heavier and heavier. Uh, although we were kind of really thrilled to meet other seekers and to have them joining us, um, vibration-wise, it got very heavy. Uh, there was a, quite a long period when you just felt like you were struggling through mud, really, compared yeah, to... Giving sort of working on people would completely slay you and we'd go back and see mother because we used to go back and see mother after each Caxton Hall and I can remember her having to clear us out and you know I'd been working on some people who had been to a false guru and all kind of very um, oh great they're going to get there you know they're going to get it but I was absolutely destroyed completely destroyed because we weren't very strong and because of our own weaknesses as well. Yeah, I remember when we went to the first mind and body exhibition <laughs> yes. in, in in London. And yeah. uh, we staggered back from that with uh, Mother was horrified. <laughs> State we, we hadn't even given realisation. We just visited it. Yeah, I know. There was no stand or anything. We just went to visit and mm. spray vibrated water around. Yeah. And uh, the, the boot sprayed stuff back at us apparently by the time yeah. we got back to mother yes we were in the right it, it just shows you because years later we can have programs in these places yeah and and uh, i would say any... when when we first started the stands at the mind and body about after about two hours you had to go out you were absolutely done um to kind of rest almost before going but now you actually come home feeling better than when you went you know, it, it's a huge change, that, yes. really. And you, you were saying about tips. I don't know if it's not exactly a tip, but I can remember going to Cabela at some point when Mother was still with us. And it had been difficult to get there, and I hadn't been for some time. And when I came back, I couldn't work because every time I put my hand out, I could feel the vibrations. I was in a sea of vibrations, so I would reach out for the keyboard and become immersed in these vibrations in my hand, and I couldn't wow. do anything. So I got in the car, drove round to Pat and Grishner's, and Grishner opened the door, and I fell into her arms and burst into tears because <laughs> I had to be with a Sarge <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I, you and needed, It was the collectivity, needed. you know? You, you, you miss the collectivity, and I think if you... If you miss, if you don't go there, you can convince yourself that you're doing everything you can for yourself. But you know, it can be hard work as well being collective. But it it's where the vibrations are strongest. If we if we're all heading the right way. Yes. Wow. And that's truly special. We were listening to this talk of Shimataji just last night. I can't remember which one it was. She's wearing. I think it's one of the Naratri Pujas and Shumataji is saying how it is important. She's talking about the different fears and then one of the thing was um, to attend collectivity and that kind of uh, works as a cleansing, you know, automatically in the vibrations of all the yogis, you kind of, you know, gain from it by losing negative stuff, I would yeah. assume. Um, so yeah, this kind of resonates with your experience there, isn't it? And every day, I mean, it's it's a different sort of uh, thing, isn't it? We have a, a life, like you were saying, with the vibrations so strong that you had to be with a yogi. And yet yeah. when we go out and we come back totally depleted <laughs> till yeah. you have a first vote and you can't actually sort of think and then it's just another day so this whole sort of it's kind of a cycle isn't it that you have to have this everyday life where you have to have you know oh it's so much easier now though stuff. i mean the, it's so much easier than it it, it was to begin with it, it's like yeah. you had a mountain on your head you know when you went out on your own yeah. anywhere uh the everything's so much easier the way people get realization is so much easier. Yeah. yeah. The way they, uh, you know, the way they experience their lives is so much easier. We really had to struggle. Um, yeah. It was really, really 
tough and and but it, of course it was made up for by those special times when we were with Shumataji, which was usually when she was in the country it's usually every week um one yeah. way or, or even whole weekends uh you know we went off to by train to um western supermare to her, her a relations, seminar. yeah her relations um uh, indian restaurant and we spent uh you know several days there i think we did that twice didn't we we did we did yes yeah and yeah. um with some other people uh so you had that you know if we hadn't had that we wouldn't have lasted five minutes no no we were completely looked after absolutely mm. you know even when we had the first ashram mother got it sorted out for us she, yeah. she organized it all yeah she found the place and, she paid and, the rent to begin with yeah. And, yeah and then she then she found another one the other one uh in finchley we were in the first yeah. ash, her first ashram was in acton yeah only there for six weeks yeah and um then we got the other one in in finchley yeah regent's Mother, park road yeah well, it did all that kind of stuff and we had um, pujas do you remember we had that puja in the in the little garden or was it the havan in out the back that was the one where mother said she'd have to um worship herself because yeah because she there was no one to read sanskrit yes yeah so she yeah, didn't I, want to, to she didn't want to take the sanskrit mantras did she obviously well, well no, no it's least. just that no one no one could do it other than her <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's no one who could do who could no be translation at all. Yeah. No, we had nothing. No, before that, all the pujas and everything were were done with with uh, Satpal, the uh, yeah. Indian pujari, who uh, who was very keen on mother and everything she was doing. But his guru had told him that he had to fulfil his um, worldly duties, and he could only meditate after he retired. So he missed out on a lot of things. Poor lad. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely guy, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he used to give us long sermons before each puja. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. remember being bored to death, and I, I looked over at Shimataji, and she looked bored because <laughs> <laughs> she gave me this huge smile. <laughs> but he was, he was, you know, a lovely guy, but he just, yeah. uh, just didn't quite get it, you know. No. Yeah, we, I mean, there's we, time and place for everything and everyone, isn't it? Sorry, Maureen. I'm no, sure we no. got lots of blessings from all that he did. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we got taken shopping in Oxford Street by mother, and I used to wonder why the people who were serving her didn't recognise her. I couldn't understand how they could just look at her and not see who she was. Well, sometimes I guess it's, it's just the maya of it, isn't it? Because... Yeah easier for them to accept and carry on how they were rather than if they recognized probably it might be scary i don't it's hard well, it, to what, say, what i it? mean is i suppose is that to me she was so obviously a goddess yeah. that's what i mean is that is that you well, know how come it didn't impinge on them at all especially with know? the seekers um that's yeah. the, the seekers surprised yeah. me more than anything i thought yeah. uh, i thought Sad yoga would spread all over the world in 10 years. You know, all the seekers yeah. would see the truth and throw it off. Yeah. Um, but but uh, we had so many. Um, uh, it was just such an extraordinary time, the whole lot. That, that long two years before we did any programs. I mean, yeah. I remember, I remember walking with Mother all around from Victoria, all around to Sloan Square, looking at flats to buy and things like that. And then um we you know we once i i drove mother to the airport to heathrow and we because you had to meet a relation who was coming by plane and, and we just sat down and had a cup of tea together waiting it was amazing times really yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, unbelievable isn't it it's so 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 special that you're remembering all these things because for us to think having a cup of tea with Srimataji at Heathrow Airport, my God. I know. <laughs> it's yeah. just unreal almost. Um, 
So could just taking you back to that India tour at Ajanta, Elora, and all those places that you visited, is there anything that Shramathji mentioned? Uh, that she, she, she wasn't uh, with us then. No, no. okay. It was, I think, we, so. we went to... Uh, she felt it was important for us to go. She sent us off to, to yeah. you know, find our own way. And uh, yeah. although we were traveling with a couple of yogis, um, yeah, uh, that's the uh, they were. The, I think they were the sons of Rao Bai, weren't they? It was uh, Rao Bai, Bao's son, um, who Jay was Singh. the yeah, the, and uh, the other one, yeah, the doctor, the doctor, yeah. yeah. But then when we came back from Nepal, we came by ourselves. We went on the by bus, yes, around around all these terrifying <laughs> bends on these on these precipices, you know, and we, didn't we'd dare bought, look out the window. We'd bought all these ridiculous, crazy um, things in the port. We bought thousands of uh, 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 statues. statues of deities. They were all packed. They were they're all packed, packed in newspaper in Greg uh, in in Gavin's bag. And when we got to the border, the guy <laughs> thought we a, were smuggling, and he solemnly a, unpacked. Yeah, Every, it's, I think that, it's this huge it's part about, of deities in the customs and, post. And you could see his total disgust because to them it meant nothing. They were like yeah. worthless. And he was expecting to find something there. And the pierce yeah. de resistance was that statue that was about, I don't know, sort of nine inches high, really heavy. And he sort of hauled it out thinking, at last I found something. And yeah, another one. <laughs> that, was that the one we bought in... Uh... I think that was the one we bought in um, uh, Agra. You remember when we got we were being hypnotized by the uh, by the, the the guy selling jewels and it got and it got paid. It was cost a fortune uh, compared to what it should have. I know. Mother yeah. laughed like mad when she when he showed yeah. it triumphantly to mother, and she gave it as a, as a present. I think she she charged CP for it. Uh, yeah, fifty pounds, and he gave it to somebody uh, to do with his work as a present. Yeah, Mother oh, that friend. yeah, I think that was a different one to the big one, but yes, well, yeah, no, it was the big one. It was huge. It was the big one? Was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But then we travelled. Um, we travelled by bus. Uh, to and we stayed in hotels. We had a wonderful time, really. And then yeah, we did. Made our yes, way so back to Delhi. No, we didn't. Didn't we go all the way back to Mumbai? I think we might have done. Or did we go back to Delhi first? Well, not all the way by bus. We went to Delhi by bus. I remember we ruined our, our livers by eating thousands of peanuts. It was these people yep. selling fresh, freshly picked peanuts at the In station. In the winter, yes. Oh, yeah. they were fantastic. We ate so yeah. many. We got severely into severely, uh, so, uh, a severe amount of trouble. We yeah. also well, had an argument on the train and caught our Aggies up. And we all got we all got in, told off a lot when we got back to Mumbai. Yeah. Well, also when we went to that um, fun fair just before Mother's birthday. Yeah, I remember that. But I, I, I did we go on that? We oh, didn't. We didn't. But we went no, there or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember not going on it because I didn't think my liver would take it. Yeah. The, the twirly about machine. We we really were like kids, I'm afraid. That was the main thing. Yes, that was. I mean, well, that that was the time, wasn't it? So um, yeah. And it was. It's it's really beautiful and very very uh, sweet how you shared um, your memories with Sri Mataji. At this point, I uh, I have to also remind that Pat and Maureen are actually brothers brother and sister so it's really yeah. very special and I'm, you've mentioned you've shared all these details in your previous set of interviews how you got your realization and things and uh, that we did earlier so um thank you very very much for your time this afternoon and well, thank, you. Uh, thank, you. thank you for sharing the stories and the unbelievable times of you know being with the Adi Shakti herself and how she has yeah, blessed us so much in every way. Um, Completely blessed. Thank you very much. We conclude Thank today's. You. Thank, you, Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji.